This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. To hear previous shows, visit mpbonline.org or download the MPB Public Radio app to listen on your iPhone or Android phone on demand. Good morning, good morning, folks. Welcome back. Horticulture's, oops, uh, we get all my stuff here together. Horticulture's fell to rush. You know, we'll be talking about gardening and garden-related stuff. And if you're not a gardener, that's okay. That's okay. I bet you got some chili back in the back of the refrigerator that's turned all moldy and green. And yeah, that's sort of like a garden. Sort of, I mean, come on. It's like a, a terrarium in the refrigerator. It's an Arctic terrarium in the back of your refrigerator. We're going to talk about a lot of oddball stuff. Um, just uh, heard from uh, our director of radio hear that this program had something like 11,000 downloads, the podcast, 11,000 downloads. Did, 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 you, did you hear that, Java? I mean, that's a lot. It is a big number. And um, Jason, our director of radio, he alerted me of that number yesterday. And I was like, man, it's just the power of Felder. No, it's, uh, it's that people ain't got anything to do. It's rainy. That's what it's boiled down to. That's what it's down to. Well, I don't know, folks, if if, uh, if you have folks who just need a little bit of a break uh, from the weather and from the, the news and the the coronavirus and the politics and all that stuff, send them a link to this program. L- listen to it. Today, we're going to talk about a lot of oddball stuff. If you don't have anything to talk about, I got some really cheesy stuff to talk about. Uh, it is a toll-free call-in program. It's live here. Uh, sorry, we may last week. I'm not sorry because it's a holiday and we enjoy the holiday, uh, but because of that, um, we didn't have a chance to talk about what to do when that cold weather came through, and it came through. I mean, it got down to the 20s, most of the state. I talked to some folks in Louisiana yesterday, and uh, oddly enough, I talked to somebody from Louisiana through uh, a Zoom meeting. I was doing a presentation in Spokane, Washington. Spokane, Washington. That's what they call the Inland Empire. It ain't Seattle. It ain't Portland. It ain't uh, it's, it's inland. It's between two mountain ranges, and they have an oddly mild Mediterranean climate. To be 100 miles from Canada, uh, it doesn't really get – their average is in the upper 20s in the wintertime. Uh, but anyway, I was doing a program there, and there were some people who were tuned in from Louisiana, and they said they got down to cold weather there too. So anyway, either you brought your plants in or you covered them up or you didn't. That's all it, it's one of those things. You either thought about it ahead of time and didn't do anything, or you thought about it ahead of time and you did something, or you just forgot about it, like I did. Uh, I threw some stuff in at the last minute, managed to get through, but some of my plants did not make it. Didn't make it. And uh, there's a, a lot of concern out there about normal plants, camellias. Do we cover our camellias? Uh, what about our roses? What about our daffodils? Those plants are fine. They've been growing out there for 100 years. They'll Sometimes they get a little burned. Some years they get, you know, wrecked a little bit. But in general, yard plants don't need that much care. I did throw some plastic over some zinnias. I big, got a big patch of zinnias that have been growing all summer. And I put some uh, some big stakes around it and just draped some plastic over all the way to the ground. Around, uncovered them the next day so they didn't steam, and then I covered them back up the next night. But anyway, I still got zinnias out there, but everything else that wouldn't normally make it, the peppers, the basil, the begonias, uh, those kind of things, they just melted. Matter of fact, I got a little bag here. Java, I showed it to you a little while ago. I brought me a little baggie of stuff. It's, it's, dark, it's dark brown. It's just like One of my favorite words. Yeah, so it's, it's dark. <laughs> There's not a word, as we've talked about this before, that dis, that really describes the process of when a plant freezes. It, you know, yeah, a plant froze last night. Yeah, but inside it, the cells, individual cells of some plants, have got this antifreeze in them that keeps them from freezing. Oak trees and roses and things like that. And uh, daylilies, you know, they don't seem to be bothered by the freeze. But some plants don't have that, and the, and the water in their cells turns to ice, it expands, it breaks the cell wall, and then the next morning it melts and it oozes out. And the plant turns black, it drips over, it droops, it's starting this nasty stuff dripping on the ground. There's not a word... Or there hasn't been a word that describes that whole process. Well, back in graduate school, some 40 or something years ago, my college roommate, Clayton Allen, who's also from Indianola, uh, Clayton is a linguistics scholar. And he said, well, you know, you can just make a word up. I said, like what? He said, like, booglify. Just say, they booglified. In Java, I googled booglify, and it's on the Internet. It's... 
from from stuff that I've said over the years. It sounds like that is what it should be, though, like the actual scientific word. <laughs> yeah, yeah, booglification. And it's not just freezing, but it's freezing, thawing, melting, turning nasty, and dripping. That's booglified. Anyway, um, we're going to be talking about stuff like that. Also, I've got a green tomato. Pull some green tomatoes in, and I could use some device on, on the best breading to use. If I want to fry these up, I've got maybe a dozen and a half. I want to slice them and make some fried green tomatoes, but I'm not sure whether I just dip them in breadcrumbs or cornflour. I, I don't know. Don't know. So anyway, we've got that to talk about. A few other uh, ornament-type things, uh, holiday ornaments made from seed pods and stuff, and also the fact that my... My paper whites bloomed for Thanksgiving. Usually they're before Christmas, but Narcissus Tazetta, the fragrant uh, multiple flower, white flower, real fragrant paper whites, they bloomed for Thanksgiving this year. Mm. Anyway, we can talk about all that stuff. If you want to give us a call and talk about what you want to, toll free one eight seven seven. MPB ring. MPB stands for Mississippi Public Broadcasting. Let's slide up to what I call the icebox of Mississippi to Corinth. Hey, Mike, how you doing, man? Hey, good morning. Uh, we have recently had a couple of nights uh, down to around 20 degrees. Uh-huh. And uh, I normally wait until about February to cut my uh, knockout roses all the way uh, down to about uh, two feet from the ground. Yeah, foot and a half, two feet, something like that. Uh, is it too early to just go ahead and do that now? It's not too early. Uh, plants that are pruned early in the winter, the ends of the they're not going to heal over. They're not going to do anything until springtime. So it's longer before spring before they can heal over. And sometimes you get some twigs to die back a little bit. So it's better to wait till February or so. But you know, it's not that big a deal. A lot of people are pruning their crepe myrtles and other shrubs, and it, it doesn't hurt the plant. But it's just a long time before they can start putting out new growth and healing over the cuts. And so I would cut them a little bit taller than you normally would. Okay you need to go back next year and prune them a little bit more. Not going to not going to hurt them though. That's okay to do it now. Well, yeah, it, you know the scientist in me says, "Well, you should wait until February." Blah, 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 blah. But the gardener says, "Shut up, Felder. It's not a big deal." Well, I tell you why I want to cut them back. Uh this is the first year we've had this problem, but uh two different times I've looked at on our bird feeder and there's a big old rat on each mm-hmm. bird seed. Mm-hmm. And I, I wanted to cut them back to eliminate as much cover around the house as I could and put out bait boxes. Yeah, well, you know, that pruning, I think, not going to help on them very much. The rats eat, uh, Norwegian, Norway roof rats are, are the most common. They're, they're small on the rat side. They've got a long tail, a lot longer than the body. And uh, they ate all of my cabbage and kale and broccoli twice. And uh, so, you know, there's not, they, they don't really care about cover because they come out at night anyway. So, oh, okay. uh, you know, you need to find out where, you know, they're, where they're, they're nesting or something and uh, either put a trap or, or, or just, just live with them. You know, they're not, it's not like we got the plague out there and uh, they're not likely to run up and chew your toe off. I guess because we haven't seen, we used, we live out in the country and we used to see a lot of, uh, House cats that were sort of wild, and we yeah. haven't seen any of those this year, so I guess they had kind of cut back on the rat population. But uh, yeah. uh, this is the first year we've ever seen rat. We've had mice before, but not rats. Well, you know, they're, they're real common. Like I say, the Norway roof rats are, are probably the, one of the most common in, in urban areas. And again, you can tell them because they're sleek looking. They're not those ugly old rats. They're sleek looking. They got a long, long tail. Um, and they're, they're, they're really common. Usually you're not going to see them. Usually they don't cause a problem. But, uh, if it's, if they're thirsty or if they're hungry or something, they're going to come out at night. So anyway, you know, it's not going to hurt you prune your roses, but that's not going to help on the rat problem. Okay, well, I appreciate the information. You yeah. have a good day. Appreciate it. Good luck. All righty, folks. Um, but yeah, but phew, we talk about rats in the garden. Who knew? Squirrels, yeah, rabbit, deer, of course. Deer just rubbed all the bark off of one of my son's cypress trees that he and I sit out last year, and it sort of honked me off a little bit. But, you know, it's a deer, and he's got a gun if he wants to take care of him. Or, uh, but I ain't going to replant that. You know, he's either going to take care of the deer or he's going to plant the next cypress tree. Sorry, Ira. But uh, deer and gardens don't mix. Well, there's rats out there, too. By the way, speaking of that, before we go to the next call, a couple of weeks ago, I got all artsy and craftsy and made a concrete bird bath. I took a made a pile of dirt, a little pile of nice pile of dirt. Took a trash can lid, metal trash can lid, and mashed it down so it made an upside down mold. 
took it off, covered that with saran wrap so that the dirt wouldn't stick to the concrete. And then I poured concrete uh, two inches thick and uh, let it dry overnight. I put a little little uh, little mesh. I put two layers of kind of layer of concrete, and then a little hardware cloth to make it strong, and then another layer of concrete. Turned it upside down, painted, it, put it out there, and yesterday there were five robins on it. Yes, I caught some birds. Caught some birds on my old fashioned bird feeder. So we're going to talk about all that stuff. But meanwhile, let's uh, go to Jackson and talk with Bill. Appreciate you holding, Bill. What's up? Greetings, Felder. Howdy. Um. Eight or nine years ago, I took some cuttings from some, a fig tree in Memphis and planted it in Belhaven. And <clears throat> what I've realized now is that I, I put two of them too close together, and they're also too close to some sweet shrub and forsythia. Did you say fig tree? Figs. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. Yeah, and I, I, I want to move one of them. I know I need to cut it back. Is this a... Now that the ground softened up, is this a good time of year for me to try to move one? Yeah, it, it, the fall is the best time. You know, once once in my the other night before two nights ago, my fig tree, all the leaves finally burned off. Once they drop their leaves, it, it, it's okay to move plants, and you do need to cut it back. Um, I don't know if you're going to be able to move that older plant intact, but if you can find some suckers around the base and get a piece of root with those and move those, and, you know, try to dig the whole thing, but if it breaks up into smaller pieces, just plant the, the youngest, healthiest ones with a little piece of root. But this will be a great time. Okay. I appreciate it. Okay. Good luck on it. Yeah, my fig trees, I planted them a couple of years ago, cut them off at uh, about a foot and a half tall, which seemed shocking because the plant was six feet tall when I got it. But it branched out last year. And then this past winter, I cut those branches back to a couple of feet long, so it looked like a hat rack. And then this year, they branched out. So instead of having a fig tree, I can't reach the figs. I got a fig bush. And all this growth that came out this year, I've got maybe, oh, 15 uh, branches that are three or four feet or so long. I'm going to cut them back. So next year, I'm going to have a fig bush that I can actually pick. And I can also throw some bird net in order if I, if I need to. A lot of people don't realize fruit trees can be pruned for size control, but it also increases their twigs and therefore their, their, their produce, their, their fruiting. And it's a lot of all Almost to Memphis to South Haven. Morning, Heidi. How are you? I'm great. How are you? It's not so bad. Appreciate it. Yeah, I really enjoy listening to you. It's fun. I've learned a lot. Too. Thanks. Mm-hmm. So I have a couple questions, but they kind of center around the same thing. Okay. I have um, just moved from apartment living to a house with dirt in South Haven. So yay for that. A house but of dirt. Yes, a house with actual a yard. Okay. <laughs> I got you, dirt. So, um, I got most of my plants in before we had a freeze the other night, mm-hmm. but there was a couple of things that I did not realize were going to... Booglify. So <laughs> I have one little hibiscus tree, one of those little braided hibiscus trees yeah. that I had so much joy out of, and it stayed out one night. Oh, boy. The trees are all, like, crinkly and crackly, can I save it? Can I prune it? Should I just wait and see? And the same thing with my banana tree. Well, the b- b- banana, that's, that's, wait, you talking about a banana, banana tree or the, what they call the banana shrub? Uh, well, with the it, big tropical looking thing? Yeah, it only got to about a foot and a half tall this year. <laughs> that's so, something but, wrong with that. Uh, but if it's a regular, know. regular banana with the, you know, turned black and mushy? Yes. Is it in a pot or in the ground? It was in the ground. I yeah. dug it up. Uh, just on the hopes that maybe the roots didn't look too bad. No, no, I no. Might save it and plant it next year. I go, don't know. go ahead and replant it. Cut it back. Cut the slimy, nasty stuff off, and and plant the stump. You know, and some of the roots, and then pile leaves all the way up over it, like a you know, just a complete cover up with leaves. Okay. Okay, even up in North Mississippi, bananas will usually come back from a hard freeze. Same thing with elephant ears, and you know, a lot of those kind of tropical type subtropical plants. Yeah, uh, my elephant ears have come back for two years now. They've done great. But same thing I'm, with banana. Same thing with banana. Okay, I've never had luck with them though. The well, ones that you, last year didn't, nor this year. Well, you know, they are pretty far north, and there are a lot of different varieties of bananas. There's some of the dwarf bananas and the ones with the burgundy leaves and all. They're nowhere near as, as Cold hardy is the old fashioned big old banana tree. So yeah. if you're not sure about it, go ahead and cut it back, get rid of the nasty stuff, and put it in a pot. 
and mm-hmm. and bring it in. It, it, it won't hurt to bring it in, but next year, you know, try to get as big as you can, nice wide hole, and then just cover it with leaves like you do your elephant ears. Okay. Now, no but hibiscus though. Uh, I would go ahead and prune it back. You know, you can leave the braided bits. Okay. And it'll still sprout wherever you make the cut. Wherever you cut a branch, that's where it can sprout back out. So cut it, you know, as low as you can and still have the pretty braided trunk. And then after a week or so, scratch the bark. And if it's bright green right under the bark, it's alive. But it's brown or tan or, or right under the bark, then, then it got frozen. And that, that's what kills them is the, the sap freezes. So gotcha. if it just burned back a little bit, you know, you, you lucked up. But um, okay. it's just scratch the bark. Pretty. It was so pretty this year. Yes, you know, <laughs> same thing with, though with lantanas, with uh, so many bougainvilleas, weeping figs, uh, the tropical hibiscus. They just don't like any kind of cold at all. But a lot of times they'll come back. Tropical hibiscus will not. If the bark is not green, it ain't going to make it. Gotcha. Well, so far it's still very springy and tough. You know, it hasn't gotten soft or you know, like they do sometimes when they're frozen. So yeah, well, pr- well, pra- practice on another couple of plants. Just take your your thumbnail or a fingernail file or something. Just cr- scratch very lightly to you know very shallow, and it, you'll see the bright green stuff. In other words, don't mm-hmm. don't booger up your your hibiscus checking right. it out. Practice on something else, and then okay. try that in a couple of spots on your hibiscus. And where it's bright mm-hmm. green, it'll sprout back out next year. Awesome! Thank you so much. Okay, Have a appreciate it. All right, bye bye. All righty. On a roll. We got uh, a couple of callers on the line. That's what we're doing here. We're having a garden party, folks. Uh, I talked to some folks in uh, Spokane, Washington, uh, the Inland Empire, yesterday. Had a lot of fun on Zoom. I showed a few slides. I answered a bunch of questions. We, we just chatted each other up and had a lot of fun. Because we can't get together in meetings. They had to cancel my, my lecture out there, so we just did a Zoom thing. And uh, this is sort of the... Hmm, what would what would gestalt? It ain't Zoom. It would be we got to come up with a word for for joining a party on a radio. Come on, okay, we could use a word here. Uh, oh, let's coin a word. I came up with a really cool word yesterday that I'm trying to to work in. But let's see. is there a Zoom version of the gestalt garden? We'll be right back, folks. Deep South Dining is the show all about the culture of Southern flavor. From fried chicken and collard greens to shrimp and grits and a glass of sweet tea. Subscribe now to the podcast using any podcast app or download our MPB public media app. This podcast is a local production of Mississippi Public Broadcasting and depends on the support of listeners like you. If you can, please donate today at mpbonline.org. And thanks. All right, folks, welcome back. Horticulture's fell to rushing. My edible of the day is green tomatoes. Tomatoes, from you, those of you from Great Britain. Uh, green tomatoes, I'm going to slice them up on the fry them. And, I, and I'm not, you know, I'm, I, I can do fish, uh, um, uh, chicken strips. You know, you dip them in some flour, then some egg, and then some breadcrumbs, and back in the egg and the breadcrumbs and the fry them. But I'm not sure the best type of breading to use on fried green tomatoes. I also have a hard time adjusting the temperature of my oil. I'm not much of a fry type of guy. But anyway, that's my edible of the week. My heirloom of the week is my little paper white narcissus. These came from my great-grandmother's yard. Uh, you know, I got a whole bunch of stuff. After she passed away, my grandmother inherited it. After she passed away, my parents got it. My brothers got it. As I've been I've been spending the past 40 years stealing plants out of my great-grandmother's yard. This little paper white narcissus that comes up and blooms Thanksgiving, December, early bloomer. Can't grow those up north can't grow where you grow tulips these don't grow because they're not that cold hardy but they smell delicious to some people some people they smell like cat pee and you know mm, get a nice little eau de feline anyway it's a great little heirloom plant pass along plant easy to divide easy to, to to share with each other and when they come up in the fall they're among the first of the winter flowers and it's so fragrant uh, anyway let's slide down to laurel down to jones county hey david good morning sir Good morning. I appreciate you holding. What's going on? Well, I've got a little project going on, and I was just wanting a little advice on something I wanted to try. Okay. You're going to do it anyway, aren't you? Uh, 
It's, it's highly possible, but I'd, <laughs> I'd like to kind of know where it's going to go. Okay. What's up? Okay. I had some uh, some mulching done around my place trying to kind of push the woods back a little bit. Yeah. With, uh, the bigger trees and just cleaned out the undergrowth. Right. So there's a, there's a lot of organics in there. Mm-hmm. And now my wife is complaining that she wants her privacy back. So Oh, no, boy. Yeah. Uh, I thought about trying <laughs> yeah. to put some, like some blueberry or some, some type of bush like that that I could get some good out of. Yeah. Am I going to have any success in this? And, and it's pine trees in there. Yeah. Above that. Yeah. Uh, you could. Uh, blueberries are uh, actually a lot of them are, are, are native, and they're native to the woodlands, but they don't produce except on the edge of the woods where they get some sunshine. So if if you can plant them where they get like middle of the af- middle of the day and late all the way to late afternoon sun, so they get seven eight hours of sunshine. In other words, put them on the on the 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 west side of your trees and pull oh. them out a little bit where they're not two competing with the tree roots, you can get some kind of production off of blueberries. Here's a problem, though. Okay. They drop their leaves in the wintertime, too, and she's going to be back on you. Well. <laughs> I'm just saying, brother. I'm just saying. I, I understand. But, I understand. But, but try, try this. Uh, y'all live out in the country, right? You can do pretty much whatever you want to do. Yes, sir. Okay. If you, and this is something you can do. When, is, she, is she listening? No. Okay. This is between have, us have, then. Have, have, okay. We're we're completely good here. Oh, okay. When she goes to the store, when she goes to visit her sister or whatever like that, uh, you know, if you got the sun in your eyes, you hold your hand up in just the right spot and shield the sun from your eyes with just one hand. You know. Okay. Well, you could do that with with her view also by putting the same sort of thing on stick. If you were to put a couple of posts, let's say about six or eight feet apart, four by four posts, and connect the top. And halfway down the bottom with two by fours, and put you some lattice sideways, not a fence, uh-huh. sort, sort of like a little miniature billboard, you know. Uh, and you can have where the lattice goes from like six feet down to four feet. In other words, it doesn't have to go all the way to the ground like a fence. And you right. put a couple of three of those out there here and there, paint them pretty, get her to pick out the colors, put little finial or little toppings on the on the or a birdhouse on top of each post. Or if you do just two or three of those, you know, eight just little section of of uh of lattice turn sideways up off the ground a couple of feet put those here and there then that gives immediate privacy and you can put your blueberries and other stuff in front of those and it looks right. good and it's cheap we're talking about 20 30 bucks per per shield they're called baffles and that'll give okay. you instant effect and buy you some time till the other stuff you plant fills in Okay. You know, it's a it's a real okay. simple thing. And you know, and if you do it right, you know, it, it looks good if you paint it and all like that. But that's a real simple instant effect. It's not a fence, it's not a hedge, and you can grow vines on it and put stuff in front of it later. But meanwhile, she got instant privacy. And okay. uh, so what you do is you see where does she really want the privacy from? Can you see neighbors through the woods? Or yeah. or is it the highway? Well, wherever the sun is, you put your hand right there. Okay. And the same thing with these things. You know, wherever the thing that the view that bothers her, put a baffle there. You can move it closer to the house or further away, but, you know, just like moving your hand to shade the sun from your eyes. Okay. Uh, shade your eyes from the sun. Anyway, that's a quick effect. To answer your question on blueberries, if you dig a wide hole and work some peat moss into the dirt, blueberries will do fine. Uh, you know, they Will they, any other berries take that? Type of environment? Yeah, um, you know, as long as they get at least six, seven, eight hours of sunshine, um, you, there's can it uh, be morning sun. As long as it's you know, you know, as long as it's right up till to, to noon, they need six or eight hours of direct sunshine to really fruit very well. They'll grow fine, but they're not going to have good Thank fruit I, without six or seven, eight hours of sunshine. Think I can do that? Yeah, and there's and a couple I, of I other. Like the baffles. Yeah, right, let me ask this: You got deer out there? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm laughing at you now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a baffle, deer may rub on it, but they're not going to eat it. Anyway, just think of that in the combination of stuff, then we can take it from there. And that's instant stuff. And once she sort of agrees to it, next time she's not around, just do it. Okay. <laughs> I like it. It's a easy, I'm, again, th- think from the ground, you know, two two feet or so off the ground up, 
you know, however, how, you know, just move it up and down, just like moving your hand to the sun until you get the exact view gone. And then paint it. You can make it dis- paint it brown, make it disappear, or put birdhouses on the on on the post or whatever you want to do. I, I like the idea of planting something on it. Uh, yeah. And, and when I plant something, I love to plant something that I can get get harvest. A yeah. Crop so off when of. you when you're tired of looking at it, you can eat it. That's exactly right. Yeah, uh, shoot me an email. I've got a list of, of easy fruit plants. There's a lot of landscape plants that uh, that people don't think about that have have uh, uh, stuff on you can eat. Just you know, not just fruit trees. You know this plant okay. called Eliagnus. I've heard you talk about it. Eliagnus. You put a little plant in the ground. Doesn't look like much. Got this long scraggly growth. Leave it alone. Next year the scraggly growth will grow scraggly growth, and next year that'll grow. And it just becomes a big old wild looking thing but it's got real fragrant flowers in november and it's got fruit that are starting to form on it right now and i put one in my yard between me and a neighbor that sounds like a another good thought okay well be good you know okay <laughs> I, I, appreciate it I, i'm trying i appreciate it all righty jones uh, county Folks, there's a lot of different approaches to things, and I can name plants. I could write, I've written books and books and books on plants, but sometimes a little hard feature will do the job quickly, and then the plant can tag along and catch up, maybe hide that. So, anyway, uh, we're still taking calls. You want to go go to the music? Let's go to the music because you said this one was extra cheesy. Well, you know, we there's so much weirdness in the world, and people are arguing. Uh, the idea of using a cheesy tune, this is as cheesy as it gets. Folks, I'm horticulturist fellow rushing, me and Java, and a Kevin Farrell, who's another producer here. He's a phone greeter today. We're going to take a little short break, two minutes of cheesy music, calm down, get some coffee, and we'll be back with more of the Gestalt Gardener here on Mississippi Public Broadcasting. <laughs> host of Money Talks. Each week, we take your personal finance questions and tell you about a money topic we hope you find helpful. Podcasts can be found on our website or on your smart device's podcasting platform. On Southern Remedy Healthy and Fit, you get information about foods you should eat to stay in good health and tips on how to stay active. I'm Dr. Josie Bidwell, host of Southern Remedy Healthy and Fit and Associate Professor of Preventive Medicine at the University of Mississippi Medical Center. Listen to the show every Monday at 11 
or subscribe to the podcast by searching for Southern Remedy with your preferred podcasting app. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Horticulture's fellow Ross. And hey, Java, I was uh, planting some stuff the other day. Um, before the rain, I went yeah. out and I plant. You know, I, I pulled up all of my my summer stuff, except for some begonias. And boy, did they booglify! <laughs> but I put out some kale and some pansies and some violas and uh, some dusty miller. You know, it's, it's just a few little winter stuff here and there. And uh, the cold will not hurt that stuff at all. It'll take. They'll take. Freezing. Yeah, they'll, yeah, they'll take seven degrees. But while I was digging around, I found an old fork. And <sighs> e- either my kids put it out there or I put it out there. But it's an old fork. And so I took a pair of needle nose pliers and I bent the tines, bent them around and t- curled them on the end. And it looks sort of like a like hair, I guess. A little. And I drilled a hole in the other end. And I'm thinking, these would make a good wind chime. And Felder, that's the type of thing that you would see, um, like at a um, at an arts fair, yeah. or a, um, um, a, like a, a flea market, and yeah, it's, it, it's you know, and I may have seen that before, but anyway, I would just I would just knock it around because it rained so much. So that I was sitting there, and I had this old fork and a pair of needle nose pliers, just knocking around, and I think it's kind of cool looking. But speaking of that. This coming this weekend and next week, I'm going to make some some holiday ornaments, some Christmas ornaments out of stuff from the yard, like when I was a kid. We yeah, we're gonna to have to take a picture of the um, the ochre you borrowed yeah, today. Yeah, Sa- ochre painted like a Santa Claus. So there's some white paint, some red paint, mix two together and get whatever your 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 skin tone is, and uh, long skinny Santa Claus faces. I got some seed pods of, for some trumpet vine. Got some sweet gum balls. Little magnolia leaves, little pine cones, and I'm gonna get a little uh, Elmer's white glue, some glitter, some paint. I'm gonna make me a a little homemade, uh, homemade Christmas, or just like I was a kid. We may get in the yard and find some stuff because we're gonna hang up. We're gonna put our Christmas tree up uh, and decorate this weekend. So I may need to. Well, that's you know that's what I did with with you know when, as a kid. You know, get a little white glue, some glitter, some paint. You know, the craft type paint. And uh, seed pods, okra, sweet gum balls, magnolia leaves, all those kind of things. And it's uh, it's corny. <laughs> no, it's it, it's the things that memories are made of. That's right. Hey, if you don't make them, ain't nobody else going to make them with your kids. I can guarantee you that. There you go. So uh, anyway, uh, and I'll show some pictures of them next week. But meanwhile, let's go back to the phone call. Let's start out in Rankin County talk with Jerry. Hey, Jerry, how are you, sir? I'm good, fella. How are you? So far, so good, man. Appreciate you hanging on there. What's what What's up? Well, listen, that, that cheesy tune makes me, it reminded me <laughs> to take some leaves out and put in my chicken pen where they'll have something to scratch on. But I, I wanted to share an experience I've had with the the rats that they, that fellow was talking about. Yeah, I had them too, so I'm all ears here. Both here at La Course Rose, my little farm here in Rankin County, and yeah. also in Madison, the garden I take care of, I, we've had a problem with wood rats or the Norway rats chewing the wires on our vehicles and with a Whoa. little research, I found that a lot of the wire coverings now are made from vegetable-based products like oh. corn, corn or soy. So it's kind of like dogs chasing chickens. Once they get a taste for it, they, they kind of back. come back. And, and and I've dealt with them kind of like we do fire ants. You're not going to get rid of all of them. You kind of run them away. It, in our garage or something, you can use a little ultrasound plug-in device that mm. keeps them away. Does it really, also, do, do they really work? Yes. Okay. Well, I mean, well, where I put them in the garages, we haven't had any more rat problems. That's yeah. all I can say there. Yeah. But also is deterrent. They sell a, pep, a real strong peppermint oil and cinnamon oil mix that you spray regularly Around your vehicle, what I do out, you know, away from the garage and stuff. And, you know, it's kind of like putting out other stuff. After a rain, you have to keep doing it. But it seems to help. So I was just kind of throwing that out there as far as some experience. Really pungent smelling stuff. Oh, yeah. You don't want to spray that in the house. (laughs) Well, you haven't been in my house lately, have you? I no, mean, no comment. <laughs> anyway, those are those are good ideas, but you know, I, I didn't know that about them eating eating the wires. Yeah, you know? I mean, you know, and I kind of check with other people. It's not just one person told me that. Uh, I know somebody that deals with heavy construction equipment, and they have that issues out on these job sites, and they're just out in the middle of you know Booney, Mississippi, kind huh. of thing. 
Huh. I'm I, I'm picturing a, uh, a a a car battery with some old frayed wire hooked into it as a trap. Yeah, and you know they make these those also those ultrasound devices that hook up to your car battery. And yeah. I, I haven't dared do that on my new truck yet. It's just something <laughs> about that warranty being, you know, kicked out the door. I think I'll wait and just keep spraying the peppermint and cinnamon oil. All right, man. You got you got any daffodils up and blooming yet? Because my paper yeah, white start my my paper white bloomed on Thanksgiving. I've yeah, always said cool. that they could do it. Yeah, I have some paper whites, and then there. What would you call the Narcissus Toretta's? Tazetta. The a paper Tazetta. white is is a type of Tazetta. Yeah. 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 Some of the yellow ones are blooming also. You so s- it, it look, looks like it's going to be a good year again. Do you think they smell like cat pee? <laughs> Have you, have, each, of, each of their own, man. I mean, some of them you want to bring in and some of them you don't. And, you know, it, you can tell pretty quick if that's the ones you want to bring in the house or not. But they're pretty as all get out. They are. There, pretty, there must be some, you know, there's got to be some pollinators somewhere in the world that like that smell. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, appreciate it, man. Stay warm and dry. Thank you, sir. All right. That was my friend Jerry Palmer from out in a boondock. He lives out in the boondocks back behind two houses that are out. In the, you have to get to the first one out in the boondocks. you got to go past the second one, then open a cattle gate to the next one. But he knows his stuff. Anyway, let's go. Uh, to John is on the road. John, I'm sorry. I did. We've been sort of shooting a breeze here while you're trying to drive. What's going on? No, I'm I, I'm not driving now. I'm 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 still down here in in in, in y'all home street. I didn't I didn't get to go home this year. Oh boy, yeah, I understand that. So what's uh, going on? What's what's up? Uh, well, we got you know we got snow in Gatlinburg. I didn't get to go home this year. Only kind of y'all got all that virus down here. Yeah, I, yeah. What I was calling you for, I got some um, Tennessee collars that I broke down here. Okay, and I don't know Tennessee collars. Is that just collars from Tennessee, or is it a variety called that? Well, that's what we call them. They got a long stem, and the leaves is way up. But what okay. I was asking oh, yeah. for, where do you get a pawpaw tree at down here? Oh, uh, well, you know, pawpaws they they grow, they grow native. They're they're bottomland trees. You find them along rivers and you know bottomlands. There's a whole bunch in Jackson along the uh, along the uh, Pearl River back behind the Natural Science Museum. Uh, there's a garden center. Uh, you know, garden centers usually don't carry pawpaws because people don't come in asking for. It. There's one in Jackson called Hutto's that has. I'm pretty sure they have pawpaws, but otherwise you got to go online. Oh, okay, okay. Well, I got some mustard greens, and these bugs are just eating me alive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and not much you can do about that. What they do in England, which, by the way, is snowing. This place where I usually stay in England is snowing today. And uh, it doesn't get that cold there, but it snows a lot. But uh, what they do there, uh, they grow a lot. Everybody there has a little garden, but they all throw these little insect nettings uh, over there. You know, they put stakes, and, so, and they'll put a little something on top of the stakes. So you don't poke your eye out. You know, yeah, a tennis yeah. ball or a little glass bottle or something like that. And they put insect netting over. They all do that because they just assume the bug's going to eat them up. Okay. And that, that's that's what I'm doing. I, I they they all of the I have a little garden I started for the first time a little 100 square foot raised bed and I just put rebar out there a uh, little frame uh, a couple of weeks ago and I'm going to put chicken wire over that to keep the rats out and I'm going to throw some insect covering over there in the summertime to keep the uh, the bugs off. And that's the best. Otherwise you got to spray. And uh John if you're going to spray, you need to use something that's safe for you. Um, and you need to spray the bottom of the leaves because that's where the bugs are. So you got to get a good sprayer. Don't, no, don't put dust on top of everything. That 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 just makes you look like you're poisoning everything. Okay. Well, I know back home we didn't we didn't use that kind. We, we used some other kind of stuff. When and I guess you remember though, because you lived in Maryville, you remember Cash Walker show, didn't you? Oh yeah, oh yeah. So anyway, that, no, uh, that, all that stuff is gone now. But even the new stuff, there's some stuff. There's there's some things out there that you can spray that are safe for you that only kill bugs, don't affect you know pets or mammals or anything like that. But you got to get the underside of the leaves. Oh yes, sir. Yes, or just sir. or just get you a debt, you know. So it's a pain, but you know it, it works. All right, sir. So, all right, so well, uh, Mr. Felder, thank you very much. And, okay, good, hey, good look. Going up. Back to my home state when you're going back to Tennessee. Well, you know, I my, I got a brother who lives in Tennessee, but I'm born and raised here in Mississippi. Oh, what about in Tennessee? What about he at? I'm gonna let you go. What he's from he he's from Maryville. 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 Oh, yeah, not Maryville, but Maryville. 
Maribel, I know about those. I can see. I was, I mean, you know, like I told you, I was born on the Indian Reservation, but I was raised in Sevier County and Knox County. Well, that's just the other side of the mountain. The other yeah. side of the ridge from Maryville. Yeah, I know. I know exactly mm-hmm. where it is. All righty, man. Well, stay, right. stay warm and dry. I'm going to try to anyway. All right, before we get to the next call, let me mention this. I noticed on BBC News this morning that the folks in Scotland have been flooding the police with gunshots. They're hearing gunshots everywhere. In Scotland, they ain't got guns in Scotland. The policemen carry sticks. And it comes to find out it's not gunshots. It's what they call thunder, snow thunder. If you have the the ground is warm and warm air rises, it hits some cold air. They have a lot of a lot of snow there. They don't have so much ice. They have snow, but if they have a real fast rising warm thing hitting some cold, then you have a, a what they call a, a a snowstorm, where I mean a thunder snow is what they call it, and it comes down like two three inches an hour, and it has lightning in it. Lightning in a snowstorm, and because the lightning lights everything up, it looks brighter and crisper because it bounces off the snow, but it thunders, and it's muffled by the snow, so it doesn't sound like thunder you can hear for miles, but for a mile or two, it sounds like a gunshot. It th- who Snow thunder. <laughs> who knows this stuff? <laughs> the great, great planet Earth. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, a snow, it's a snow thunder. <laughs> Anyway, let's go now to uh, Robert, calling from Florence. Hey, Robert, thanks for holding, man. What's up? Yes, sir. What's How up? Are you today? So far, so good. I'm trying to trying to not giggle because, you know, I made it through the freeze. There you go. What, there what, you go. What can I help you with? Okay, on scupping eyes, I heard you talking about when you prune them to, to pull, follow the vine all the way back to where it starts. Yeah. Uh, and you cut it off even, or you leave a little stuff? No, there? no, no. You leave a little stuff. Cut it back to where there's there's one or two or three leaf joints left. One heavy leaves on it, but those little sw- where the leaf joints are, that's uh-huh. where that's where the new growth will come out next year, and that'll have uh, ber- uh, berries on it. So cut it back to stubs that have at least one or two, maybe three leaf joints. Okay. And you cut all the long vines off? All the way back to two or three leaf joints. And if you have too many of those stubs left, you can cut some of those off. In other words, you don't right. have, to, you know, have to, to leave all of them. But if you cut them all the way back, they'll branch out next year, but they won't have berries. So you need to leave at least some stubs of this year's growth. Okay, got you. Okay. All right, good I luck. Appreciate okay, appreciate yes, it, man. Sir, Oh, let me see. There's something else I wanted to talk about this morning, but uh, now, but, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. A word. I came up with a word that someone was telling me about called telomeres. Telomeres. And I wasn't sure what a telomere was, but at the end of your genetic stuff, your strands of DNA or whatever, they got little, uh, the ends of strands can, can fray a little bit. And so you got these things called telomeres on the end that keep them from fraying. As you get older, the telomeres all rub off. And you, your DNA gets all fuzzy on the end. You come to find out, it's like aglets. <laughs> Java. Now, when I say aglet, I'm not talking about quail eggs. I'm not talking about little eggs. I'm talking about aglets. And that's that little plastic thing that's on the end of your shoelace to keep your shoelace from fraying. And I'm thinking, that's what the Gestalt Gardener, that's where we fit. We're trying to keep all this gardening and horticulture stuff from fraying. We're the aglet of gardening. (laughs) Okay, Java, you don't have to say anything. I see you look. I see you look. You don't have to say anything, brother. (laughs) Let's let's go to uh, up to to Delta, to Greenwood. Hey, Bill, good morning, sir. Hey, uh, Phil, how you doing? You I'm fine. <laughs> Talking about aglets and telomeres and booglifying and all sorts of weird stuff. What you got this morning? Well, I'll tell you what. You said you got probably with some little varmints. Uh, I had, I don't know if it was a little rat or it was a mouse, but I uh, kept hearing something knocking around. I got two little sweet kitties, and, and they started growing up, and uh, they've been pretty good mousers. <laughs> They get about two or three a day sometimes, and if you if you if you feed them, they'll stop doing that. You know. <laughs> well, you know, these are the eatingest cats I've ever seen. They just <laughs> all hungry, but I try to get a little bit. You know, a little yeah. Bit well, and, are they helping for whatever's bumping around? 
yeah, they they I was threatening to get rid of them because they were driving me crazy. But you know, they they sort of uh, making the keep right now. There you go. There you go. They, they're pretty good. They're not as good as the dog, you know. Yep. Well, all righty, man. I appreciate that. Little feral cats, if you like to say. Uh, I go to garden centers a lot of times. They'll have cats out there to keep the mice out of their, their feed stuff and all. Anyway, appreciate your call, man. And let's go down to Mobile, Alabama. Mikey, good morning, lady. How are you doing? Hey, good morning. I'm glad you're making up words today. Yeah, I know, I'm not, yeah but Boogler <laughs> Clayton Allen made that up 40 years ago, but uh, the aglet, the well, little plastic I thing. I just want to point out, Felder, and you may be old enough to remember this, that there was a popular dance called the Boogaloo. <laughs> the Boogaloo? Yeah. I remember that. You that's right. That's that? right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Pretend like you're too young. Go ahead. Oh, Listen, hey, uh, I, I, I'm not. I said two things. First of all, I sat on an aircraft carrier during Vietnam. Second thing, I had a howdy doody rocking chair when I was a kid. So we're well, talking about. But you I had remember a that song, of the Kitty Hawk? I was on a Kitty Hawk. Uh, you I remember, know. remember that song? That's right. That's right. The Boogaloo song. The Boogaloo. Yep. And you had to be a pretty good dancer to do it, right? Well, or, or a geeky person that just dances by yourself. That's what I was. <laughs> so anyway. Anyway, um, I, I called to ask a gardening um, uh, thing. Uh, I, and I talked to you before about uh, liriope, liriope, whatever, monkey grass. Yeah, okay? monkey grass, right. Whatever people want to call it, you know. It actually um, is supposed to be pronounced liriope because it's named after a Greek nymph or something like that. It's not liriope, yeah. it's not liriope, it's liriope. But anyway, that monkey, it, yeah, monkey the grass. Is e. yeah, 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 monkey liriope, grass. Yeah, whatever. Um, monkey grass works for me. Yeah. And it, it's working for me in my yard. And I called and talked to you about it and asked you if it would reproduce from seed. And at that time, you said you didn't know, that you'd have to look into it. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, with, and, and, I mean, I have great respect for your, um, uh, your turf man experience, shall yeah. we say. Yeah, well. uh, uh, but, uh, and you suggested that I go ahead, because I told you that I had la- last year gone ahead and, and uh, grabbed the seeds off of them as they were, because I've noticed over the years right. and, and thrown them, cast them where I wanted them to grow because this is a great so, lawn. So how, for, how did it do? Area. How did it do? Well, well, I did great last year, but I, I, you know, this year I took your, your advice and wait, because what you said that was different from what I did last year is to wait until the berries turn purple. Yeah, mature, so, ripen, yeah. Yeah, and so I put, you know, put the effort into doing that and cast in an area. Now, what I had that was mixed in with those things previously, and the reason I wanted to get rid of the the stuff that was underneath, Asian uh, jasmine. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I'm mean booger, right? Okay, okay. Let's get to the point here. But also bahia grass, which I got rid of by pulling up the seeds from that and putting in places that were barren. Yeah, so back to the monkey grass. Did it work? Well, it, I, I don't know yet. You know, I'm not just, I mean, this is, you know, this is, look, come on. You know? I know. I'm just, you know, I, 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 I I I am one of the few experts who who first of all knows I don't know it at all, and I get thrilled when I. When what I was taught turned out to be not be true, but I was raised by older gardeners. But when somebody tries something new, if it works, that's great to know. If it doesn't, well, you know, we had fun. Okay, but my question is. Do I now, because I held off on mowing those areas, which is, you know, the, the, I want it to be all eventually monkey grass lawn. Yeah. Do I hold off on mowing those areas until February okay. or let me, let me, let me, earlier or what? Let me, let, me, let me put on my horticulture hat first. Horticulturists say, no, I don't think so. They're not going to work. The gardener in me says... As much monkey grass as I've grown over the year, including eight different kinds, I've never seen it come up where I didn't plant it. So I don't think it, I don't think the seeds, for some reason, reach maturity. I don't know. But that's just based on what I know. What I don't know is if it will work. So I don't know. We just have to wait and see. Give it a try and uh, let us know. But. I, I don't know. It's, I know it's easy to dig a clump up, pull it apart, take a screwdriver, stick a hole in the ground, put a little piece of it in there, and next year you got a clump. So I know that that's fast. So if you if you want to try it from seed, I try it in, I don't know. I don't know. And that's a good way to end a program. I don't know. 
Now that's that's the one of the best things about this show, Felder. That you know, if you call another program, they probably would have made something up for yep. Mikey and you know sent her down the wrong path. But you will immediately say I that don't you know. do not know. Yeah. Well, no, I don't say I do not know. I say I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but at the same time, if anybody has grown monkey grass from seed, let us know because we're going to try that. And Mikey down at Mobile is giving it a try. And that's that old can-do gardening spirit. Hey, I'm going to spend this week making ornaments from okra. i got a little long, skinny Santa Claus face made from okra. I've got some seed pods of some trumpet creeper, trumpet vine. Um, I've got some uh, sweet gum balls, got some little magnolia leaves, some little pine cones. I'm going to try to make some ornaments. Meanwhile, my cabin smells like paper whites which either smell like flowers or cat pee, depending on how you want to look at it, but ain't it great? I got boogalified, slimy-looking stuff all over the yard that's going to get compost. And I'm going to see if I can dig up some more spoons and forks, take me a hammer and some needle those pliers and make me a wind chime, flatten out some spoons. Now, Felder, before we leave, I want to say uh, thank you to the good people of Hattiesburg, Uh, Mississippi and Atlanta, Georgia, because Jason Klein just sent the email uh, with the top two cities who download the Gestalt Gardener, and that's Hattiesburg and Atlanta. Wow. Well, howdy Atlanta. Howdy Hattiesburg. Howdy people in Spokane, Washington, because some of them are listening, too. Hey, we've had a pretty good time this morning. It's just knocking around. It's a party. Got a bunch of weird words like aglet and telomeres and booglify. And me and Java had some good laughs at each other and um, with y'all. So if you got some things during the week that um, that uh, that you can, I can help you with, shoot me an email, garden at mpbonline.org. Otherwise, take a kid out in the woods, rather, see if you can find some uh, seed pods and some white glue and some glitter and some paint and make some little ornaments. doesn't have to be Christmas. It can be just holiday chairs. And if you find a, a fork while out there, take some needle nose pliers and turn it into something pretty you can hang. I'm a horticulturist, fellow rushing folks. Take